Is the Bitcoin bull market over or does it still have more room to run? Let's go ahead and get into it. Things have certainly not been the most ideal for Bitcoin more recently. Just look at the price chart. Not the best thing to go back up and basically retest the all-time highs, get rejected, and now we have come down pretty notably from that local top to where we are right now, down 15%. So not massive, not colossal. And certainly if you look at prior bull markets, you'll see plenty of times where there've been pretty deep corrections that have been worse than what we just saw there. I mean, look at 2017 as being a great example of this. Just look at how many of these corrections we had that were quite deep and quite nasty. So in the grand scheme of things, this downtrend that we've seen more recently, this local turn down is not unprecedented. I mean, heck, we already did it from here to here. We're doing it again now. But I think people are raising a lot of questions of what's going on here? Why did we fail to break above here? It seemed like there was some strength and especially with a lot of bullish news coming out there with the regulatory situation seeming better in the United States with the Ethereum ETF, just things in crypto generally looking more positive. Why has Bitcoin been struggling? So what I want to do is look at the underlying data, kind of ignore the narratives, ignore some of that noise that can be out there, the emotions that get caught up with it. Look at the cold, hard data and just see what are they saying and do they suggest that concern is the smart thing in the situation or not? So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is some on-chain data for Bitcoin. This is basically looking at actual behavior on the network, which can be really useful to understand where Bitcoin is and where it might be going next. So what I want to talk about first here is the realized price of Bitcoin that is basically 180 days or less. So what does that mean? So realized price is basically the price at which someone spent a Bitcoin. And then because of that, someone else acquired that Bitcoin for that price, it becomes their cost basis. And so basically the 180 day realized price is basically any Bitcoin that have moved within the last 180 days, what was their average cost basis? That's basically what that means. Or the people who now hold those Bitcoin, what is their cost basis? That's what it's getting at. And the reason that we care is that in bull markets, the shorter term realized price tends to act as support. That when you get back down to those shorter term holders realized price, they'll often step in, see it as a value zone. If they bought it there before, they might see it as being value again to buy at that level. And so then they'll protect it and you'll tend to see support fall along that level. Likewise, in bear markets, you actually see it often act as resistance. Basically, people have been holding for a short time. They're taking the opportunity to sell out without taking a loss. That's what's happening there. And so even in this cycle, there were multiple times where we held it as support or more or less held it as support. There was one time back here in August of 23, where we actually dipped below it, but then we got up above it and actually more or less retested it here, retested it here. And now more recently, if we zoom in, we've actually broken down below it. So this is something that I think is gonna be important to watch because it certainly is not unprecedented to break below. We already talked about one occurrence where we broke below and got back above without too much difficulty. And also you can zoom back out to prior cycles as well. You'll see, for example, in 2017, it was not uncommon to get below the level, but you'd bounce relatively quickly afterwards. And I think that's really what we're looking for is either a quick bounce, that would be the best thing that we could see from here, obviously, or at the very least, just us spending time around it, not getting a big capitulation wick coming down below it, or a big capitulation candle really pushing us way down below it. That would maybe suggest that now the shorter term trend has changed. And now maybe this will actually flip into resistance the next time we rally up to it rather than being support. So I think this is a really critical level from that perspective, because oftentimes when you break down below this shorter term holder cost basis, not good things happen. Bad things can follow pretty nasty moves to the downside. So we'd like to avoid that. And so that's where I think right now is a really important time to be paying attention. Now, obviously Bitcoin can do whatever it wants. It could do something really anomalous where it breaks down really far and just rallies up past it. But that would be the exception rather than the rule of how it tends to behave around this level. And it kind of makes sense just psychologically that this is people hold some investment that they're taking a loss on. And if it rallies back up to that, that becomes tempting to just get out and not risk further loss. So we'll have to wait and see how those dynamics play out. So that's one thing I think is useful to watch. The other one, which frankly is looking pretty concerning right now in my view, is the active addresses on the Bitcoin network. So active addresses just are basically the number of addresses that are using the network that are transacting on it. 
And this is looking across a 30 day period that I'm showing you here. And so what you can see with Bitcoin is generally in its entire history, it's been doing nothing but going, generally growing in terms of active addresses. They just get more and more people who are using the network and that has coincided with price moving up as well. Now, one thing that's been happening more recently, which is concerning, is this big dip that we've seen in terms of the number of active addresses on the network. Now, I don't know exactly what is potentially causing this, and it is possible there's some kind of uh, mechanical reason for why this would be happening. If you know about that, and you know, please leave that in the comments of why this might be happening. So if there is some kind of weird exception that's going on, maybe it's not as concerning. But barring that, this is not something you like to see. You generally don't really see these big drops except for when you've already put in the top, basically, for the cycle. I mean, look what happened over here, 2017. You put in your top, that's when you had the big spike in usage, and then everyone lost interest as price really collapsed, and then it really took the whole bear market before you suddenly started to see interest pick back up and more and more usage. Again, fell off a cliff, and then we actually did kind of hold sideways, more or less, throughout this whole bear market, but now we've fallen off again. So in and of itself, it's not the only thing. Like, I'm not personally going to be panicking looking at this, but I don't think it's a great thing. I think we'd like to see the network get more usage again before we get too hopeful. And I think at the very least what it might suggest is that new entrants haven't really shown up here. Retail, broader, kind of newer people who haven't really gotten into crypto before, haven't just been here, they're not getting in. We're not getting a lot of new people using the actual network yet. Now, the good news about that potentially is that if we do hold these price levels, if we're not about to enter into a bear market, it just means that when all that activity and interest rushes back in, then we're doing it from a pretty high price point that could actually be a catalyst to move us up further. But right now, this is something that I'm going to be watching closely because it's not an ideal thing. And it's a relatively new development that we've really fallen off a cliff this extremely. So another thing we can look at, so now this is flipping away from on-chain data and going to the models that we have here on the channel. Now, this is what I'm showing you here, I've talked about before. It's our DXY-based fair value. So the DXY, if you're not familiar, is the strength of the dollar relative to a basket of other fiat currencies. This is it right here. And the reason why we care about the DXY is it tends to be inversely correlated with Bitcoin and with crypto in general. When you see the DXY moving up really strongly, that tends to be situations where Bitcoin is doing horribly, is in full-on bear markets, and oftentimes risk assets in general, the stock market will not do well in those environments either. But then when you see the, the DXY go down, that's the opposite. That's where you tend to get those tailwinds for crypto and Bitcoin, they tend to do better. So it's a pretty robust relationship. And so the idea with this model, oops, this one here, is that we're taking that and we're leveraging it to get an idea of where should Bitcoin be at a given point in time. We know that it tends to react to what the dollar is doing we can leverage that information to get an idea of where it should be at a given point in time or its fair value, quote unquote, based on what the DXY is doing. And see, it does a really good job identifying these periods, especially when Bitcoin is overvalued and also when it's undervalued and could be a good buy, as well as these leading indicator kind of uh, behavior like here, suggesting that Bitcoin was massively undervalued and then it rallied up into the bull market and then was massively overvalued here going into the bear market. And then again, undervalued, and then now we've kind of get this point where we've been trading blows with the fair value, moving above it, below it, and now we're above it again. And so that's another thing that's been concerning, at least in the short term, but potentially longer term too, based on what the DXY does, is that we're above fair value. And really, if you had to choose, you'd rather be below fair value than being above fair value. You'd rather be in a value zone than an overvalued zone. And so this is something I'm gonna be watching closely. Now I have talked in the past, and I still think this is important to realize, is that in the past, when you've seen these big bull market tops, these big bull off tops, it's happened when the price has gotten pretty extremely far away from its DXY based fair value, pretty extreme deviations. Now it has been getting lower and lower with time, but still notable. You can still see a lot of sky between fair value and where price is. Now we have gotten to a point where there is certainly a deviation, but it's not super extreme yet. So that's where I think this doesn't necessarily have to mean that the cycle's over. But what I would really like to see is for the fair value to start rising and meeting price and maybe even rising above price, which would suggest that now price would again be undervalued. That would be a much more positive condition to be in than where we are right now. And so what that might suggest or might mean is that the DXY might need to break down. We might need to wait until that were to happen before getting too excited. 
And so we'll have to wait and see what happens. But so far, the DXY has been very stubborn with this local uptrend that it's been in really ever since December of 23. We have seen it just kind of continue in an uptrend and it has not broken down yet. I'd like to see that change. And if that does change, I suspect that the fair value would also then go up and that things will look better for Bitcoin from that perspective. So this is one of the things I'm watching. Now, another thing that we can look at is risk for Bitcoin. So this is our long-term upside downside potential indicator or UDPI. It's a risk model. Higher values mean higher risk, lower values mean lower risk. And you see it does a really good job of identifying these tops and bottoms throughout the market, giving you a good idea of how much risk is there that price is gonna be going down notably in the not too distant future. And so one of the things you'll notice when you look at this is that when we push to the new all-time high back here in March, you'll notice that we got pretty high on this model. We got all the way up to about 2.5. The top of the scale is five. And so really Bitcoin has very rarely gotten to these levels. The only times it has has really been these kind of intermediate peaks or going all the way up to these big bull off top moments, or in this case, the technical all-time high, but really kind of a big prolonged dead cat bounce, more or less, before going into the bear market. And so what you'll notice is similar across all of those different scenarios, and especially the ones that have topped at the similar level, is that local tops formed, and there was notable downside that followed before you could potentially continue to the upside in a bull market. So that's where I was talking about this loud and clear, both here on YouTube and over on X when this was happening, watch this level closely. I was saying that what we were looking at right now is either us going off to a blow off top, which I didn't want to have happen because that would just mean that the cycle could be over maybe prematurely, or we might have some chop, some boredom, some consolidation, some correction that would need to follow before the bull market could continue. And that's where my base case still remains. It's possible this was the top. I mean, heck, we had an all time high that ended up being the top at similar levels back here, late 2021. It is certainly possible that this was just was the top and now we're gonna go into a bear market. I still don't lean that way. I still think it's more likely that we're in a bull market still, but I'm not nearly as confident of that as it was throughout all of 2023. If you were watching me in 2023, following me on X, you know I was very bullish this whole time because all of the data you was uniformly telling me that that was the right position to be, that it, was, it made sense, much more sense to be bullish than bearish. Here, we're in much more of a no man's land where it still is the case that I think the data still generally still lean more in the bull case than the bear case, but they're not nearly as lopsided. And that's where I think these people who are out there with 100% conviction one way or the other, either that we're going into a bear market or that we're just going to go off into a big, you know, continue the big bull market and go off to some crazy price level. Personally, I don't think the data suggests that that level of confidence is warranted. So I'm, that's why I'm watching things really closely right now. Even though the market's felt boring, it's felt been kind of dull or kind of fearful, these are the critical levels. These are the critical points to watch because I think what happens in the next month or so is probably going to tell us where we're going. It's probably going to give us a pretty good sense of where we're heading. So I think we're kind of entering into a critical junction where we might know. Now, the good news from a risk perspective is that we have pulled off notably, but again, we're not down in these super deep value zones again. So if we're in a bull market, it might just look like something like it has in some of the past where you will have these deep dips that happened in the middle of bull markets before you go and continue off to the upside. But certainly we're not at some extreme level where I think that some bottom is extremely likely to form. And that's where it would not surprise me if Bitcoin were to correct further, if risk were to fall further. And then more at these lower levels that have tended to mark these really good value zones, that's when I'd start saying, okay, this is looking a lot more favorable for Bitcoin at that time. So I think this is certainly a value zone. It's a heck of a lot better than we were here, but it's still not as deep as it could potentially get. So something that I'm going to be watching also here. And if you want to see data from these models and more, you can do so at our website, partydigital.io. Link is in the description. That's how you can watch it in real time. If you're interested, that's obviously where I'm pulling this from right now. Okay. So the final model I wanted to talk about was our forecast model. So this is another one that's suggesting caution makes sense here, not panic, not just hundred percent thinking we're in a bear market or anything like that, but caution. So what this model does is it gives you a probability. How likely is it that the price of Bitcoin will be above where it is today, six months in the future? And you can see it does a really good job of navigating the market, giving you an idea of when being bullish makes sense and when being bearish makes sense. Basically, when should you be more confident in the bull case versus more confident in the bear case? And it's done very well over Bitcoin's history. And what's concerning is what's been going on more recently. And this was another thing where in 
this moment here really since the bottom in 22 and then going into 2023 one of the reasons why i was so bullish this whole time was because the forecast model was just saying this makes sense and also because our risk model udpi said it makes sense to be bullish these things were coming together in a very nice way but now look what's happening we're falling off of that really kind of more bull market type of footing that this model tends to put in you'll notice that in these prior cycles that it tends to kind of hang out at these really high levels in those kind of full-on bull market periods or when it really makes sense to do that in a bull market but then what you can see is that as you get into the later stages of a bull market it starts to oscillate a little bit more get a little bit less certain kind of flip around a bit more or if you have an intermediate lull in the market like we did here in 2019 before we ultimately went on the bull run getting less confident again suggesting that maybe just thinking we're going to go blowing off to the upside maybe not as likely as some people might be saying so to be clear it still is bullish still says there's a 56 percent chance that the price of bitcoin would be higher than it is right now six months in the future that's not nearly as good as it was back here when it was saying you know 93 percent and things like that and so that's where its opinion has been changing more recently really as we entered into the new year and then we got into it that's when things kind of definitely made a change so I'm going to be watching this really closely because if we do start getting into these really low levels where we're now below 50% chance of upside, that becomes concerning. And that becomes a sign that either we might actually have to consider the possibility of, at the very least, a more protracted period of downward movement on Bitcoin, or the worst case scenario would be a full-on bear market coming in after that. What we'd really like to see is for this to reverse. And so what this is telling me is that conditions in the market right now are not fantastic. From the model's perspective, what it's seeing is this not as much of a fan of it as it had been? Now, it still remains bullish. Still thinks it's better odds on that side than bearish, but not nearly as lopsided as it once was. So that's, again, where I think this is going to be really critical. I suspect that in not too long, or the next couple months probably, we're going to have a very good idea of where the market is heading. And then we can adjust from there. And that's why I don't let my emotions dictate my outlook on the market. I am going to look at the data and do what they are telling me. I'm going to take the position that makes sense based on the data. I don't want to let my emotions and my subjective evaluations drive what I think is going to happen. I want to let the data do that. That's my personal perspective on the market or how I navigate things. Now, obviously, none of that is a financial advice. You should do what you think makes the most sense and make of these data as you will. But I think looking at Bitcoin right now, I think what it all ultimately really comes down to is that we're at pretty important level some people just laugh this off and say we've seen nothing yet corrections in bull markets are common everything's fine we're just going to go off to the upside you'll see other people saying that this is, means that we're guaranteed to go to a horrible bear market down 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 we go and so where i'm sitting is in the middle i was extremely bullish this whole time worked very well now i'm more uncertain and i think that's what the data is pointing to is that you can still lean one way or the other I, and personally i still think that leaning in the bull case makes sense from the data's perspective but I'm not going to be going out there and saying that it's guaranteed. Oh yeah, absolutely. Bitcoin's just going to go ripping up higher. The data just don't support that level of confidence. So I'm not going to be there. And so therefore I'm going to calibrate what I do and how I navigate the market accordingly. All right. If you like the content, we're going to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X. A lot of updates for our models and more over there. And if you want to view live data from our models and more, you can do so at our website, clarity Link in the description.